Welcome back to BT here on a Friday morning, and it's the final day of election campaigning here in BC as we get ready to uh, cast our votes, if you haven't done so already, tomorrow. For more on this, we're joined by Lisa Usda from News 1130. Lisa, welcome back. And obviously, the campaigning today being overshadowed by all the COVID-19 uh, cases that still keep cropping up here in our province. Yeah, it's pretty stunning what we saw yesterday. I, I told a friend what the numbers were, who's also in our business, so she's used to seeing this. And she said she actually felt nauseous when she heard it. We had 274 cases yesterday, new cases. We saw that was the fourth day in a week that we'd broken a record for how many cases we'd seen here. We are nearly at the peak of how many people are active cases. 1987 on September 21st was the highest number. Now we're at around 1920. So it's a big problem. And Dr. Bonnie Henry telling us, you know, there's a lot of focus on schools and we just had the first school outbreak, but the challenge they're really seeing is weddings and funerals. And so she's talking like they're going to get tough if people don't make changes, that when people get their licenses for a wedding, there could be restrictions tied to it. And she's looking at other restrictions that might be possible. She said all along that she doesn't want to do this. So this is a distinct change in her tone yesterday, saying that she could look at having to take tougher measures in order to get things under control because it could get a lot worse. With respect to the three main parties, does NDP leader John Horgan have a substantial lead heading into the election tomorrow? It's looking pretty good for him. There are some recent polls out today that show that he is holding steady. Some people wondering if what's happening in schools and seeing a lot of school cases was going to make a difference. He has been holding very steady, so it's looking good. And for those of us who report on it and those who watch it closely the night of, I'm hoping this means that one way or another we're going to know because there are, of course, you know, more than half the votes that are cast in an election in B.C. generally have already been cast. And about a third of those, well, more than a third of those are votes that are mail-in ballots. And those ballots can't be counted the night up. They take a process. And we're going to hear from Elections B.C. a bit more about that process because there are about 360,000 ballots that have been returned so far. They expect a lot more. 724,000 went out. So we'll see how long it takes to count those. Last election, just for reference, 6,500 ballots were counted in the two weeks after the election of mail-in ballots. So this week, this year, we have potentially 10 times that. Right now, we're at about, we're expecting around 400,000, maybe 450,000 returned. So it could take more than two weeks to count that because they just are not used to that. But we'll hear about what that process is going to look like this year. Right. You've been following this exhaustively for the months leading up to, uh, well, we didn't know about the election uh, that far back, but you've obviously been covering the, uh, the politics and everything that goes on in Victoria. Uh, in the last couple of weeks with the B.C. Liberal Party, it seems like they've had uh, you know, a lot of stumbles along the way. Uh, what else? Ultimately, was the problem with the Andrew Wilkinson and the uh, Liberal Party in their campaign? What was the problem? Well, I, that, that's the million-dollar question, probably, Thor. I think that there's an issue. You know, one of the, the criticisms of, of Andrew Wilkinson coming into this was that he's out of touch. You know, he made those comments about wacky renters, and he had, a, you know, an event about housing affordability at a yacht club. So there's been a lot of things about him not, not reaching you know, the everyday person. And I, I think that that has remained an issue. And of course, one of the bigger issues that's happened is there were candidates of theirs that were saying homophobic things that supported homophobic and transphobic policies or papers or organizations. And that proved to be a problem. And of course, they lost their candidate in Chilliwack, Lori Thronas, who's running as an independent now. So I, I think they had a few problems. And God knows there's been a lot of mudslinging back and forth this week. Um, nothing that people have picked up on because they're just things that people throw back and forth. So I'll be glad to see that gone. But yeah, it's been a challenging campaign for the Liberals. No doubt. And you mentioned Elections BC providing a tech briefing later today. We'll learn more about the counting and the timing. Do we have any, any indication of where the three main leaders will be tomorrow on voting day? I don't know where they're going to be tomorrow. I know today they are focusing... Both parties, the NDP, are focusing on seats that they think they can win from the Liberals. The Liberals focusing on seats they think they can win from the NDP. So they're both they're both looking at taking seats from the others. Um, the Liberals today are in North Van Lonsdale. That's where Bowen Ma is. That's where there was one of the controversies. Was uh, Jane Thornthwaite from the Liberals had said some nasty things and sexist things about Bowen Ma. So they're they're in North Van Lonsdale, and the NDP we're seeing. You know, down in the Vancouver area around where you are, um, Vancouver, Langara, and Falls Creek. 
Well, you're going to have a busy 48 hours. We thank you so much for your time today, and we'll check in with you next week. Thanks so much, Lisa. Thank you, Thor. All right, you take care. That's Lisa Yuzda, News 1130's legislative reporter, and we've got.